International Training for Elders and Responsible Ones October 2022 Week 1 Day 2 Morning Nourishment Ephesians 5:25 Husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her 2 Corinthians 5:14-15 for the love of Christ constrains us because we have judged this, that one died for all, therefore all died, and he died for all that those who live may no longer live to themselves but to him who died for them and has been raised. Christ is a church-loving Christ. Galatians 2.20 says that Christ loved me and gave himself up for me. Although Christians pay attention to this verse, they may not also pay attention to Ephesians 5.25, where we are told that Christ loved the church and gave himself up for the church. We all need to enjoy Christ and to experience him as the church-loving Christ. Because we also love the church, we are one with him for the spread of his recovery throughout the world and back to Jerusalem. Oh, how Christ loves the church! He is in us as the church-loving Christ. His love for the church makes us willing to give our all for the recovery of the church life. Today's reading The Lord charges us to overcome all kinds of religion, and in these seven epistles he also charges us to overcome some other matters. The first thing we are charged to overcome is the leaving, the losing, of the first love. To have the first love is to give the preeminence, the first place, to the Lord Jesus in everything, even in all the small things. When the brothers buy a tie, they need to give Christ the preeminence. When the sisters go shopping, they need to give Christ the first place. When the Saturday edition of the newspaper comes out, some sisters like to read it to find all the sales in the department stores. To have this practice means that they do not give the Lord the preeminence. They do not let the Lord have the first place in their shopping. If we need something, we should go to the store to get that thing and nothing else. The sisters need to overcome the temptation of the department stores. In 2 Corinthians 5.14 Paul says that the love of Christ constrains us. Because the love of Christ constrained him, Paul was a person who lived to the Lord. We must be persons carried away by the love of Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5.14-15 Paul tells us that the dying love of Christ is like the rushing of great waters toward us impelling us to live to him beyond our own control. To be constrained is similar to being carried away by a tide of water. The love of Christ is as strong as a tide of water which overcomes us and carries us away. We need to be flooded by the love of Christ. We need to be constrained by his love so that we have no choice. We should be able to say, I have no other way to go. I have to love the Lord because his love has constrained me. What can I do? When the flood waters come, we do not have a choice as to whether we will receive them or not. The flood waters give us no choice. We all have to be constrained by the love of Christ in such a way. The young saints among us need to realize that although they love the Lord today, they are still at the crossroads of their Christian experience. There are many directions for them to choose, to take. They may have many choices, but once they are flooded by the love of Christ, they lose all the choices. You should not live any more by what you are or by what you can do. You have to live by the eternal life, which is Christ Himself, and you have to be so ambitious to please Him. You also have to be flooded and carried away by the constraining love of Christ and learn how to recognize things, how to discern things, not by outward appearance but by the inward measure of Christ in the Spirit. 
then you will be the ambassador of Christ representing his authority and interest on this earth. This is the end of today's morning revival.